and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed, and today we're going to be continuing our Space Wars videos with a sub-video relating to the 13th Great Company. Now, I know a few of you know about this because it was in the comments in previous videos, but I just wanted to go over this company in a little bit more detail just to highlight exactly how they are different from the rest of the Space Wars chapter. Now, the history of the 13th Great Company was that it was formed by Lehman Russ in his days on Fenris before the coming of the Emperor. As such, they were known as the Greybeards to the Legion, while referring to themselves as the Wolf Brothers. Preceding the heresy, that company was led by Wolf Lord Jorin Bloodhowl. Now, the 13th Great Company was apparently lost during the Space Wolves' pursuit of the Thousand Suns, following the sacking of Prospero, though the circumstances of that disappearance remain a mystery. One legend states that the members of the 13th Company swore to hunt their foes down until every last one of the cursed marines was slain, no matter how long it took, nor where the traitors fled. They vanished from Imperial records at this time, and their stone on the Great Annulus, the record of Space Wolf Great Companies in the Great Hall of the Fang, was replaced by a black slab of obsidian. Since then, the subject of the 13th Great Company has become taboo amongst the Space Wolves, and it is forbidden to speak of them, except in slight whispers amongst those neophytes who learn from others about that lost company. Now, the black stone on the Great Annulus has come to represent all the great companies in the chapter's history that have disappeared, been destroyed in battle, or turned renegade. Before their disappearance, the totem was the sign of the Wolfen, but no great company has used that badge since the heresy. In the 41st millennium, the 13th Great Company was in fact encountered by Ragnar Blackmane on a shadow copy of Cryus conjured by the Thousand Sons. Lord Bulvi was in command, though he was not forthcoming about the 13th Great Company's origins, or how the Great Company had fared in the 10,000 years since their departure. A small number of the 13th Company wolves fought alongside Ragnar and his companions to defeat the Chaos Sorcerer Maddox, thwarting the plot by the Thousand Sons to destroy the wolves. The 13th Great Company was also suspected of having saved Imperial forces under the Black Legion attack in the Ormantep Raid. Somehow, the hardy sons of Rust survived their journey through the eye and emerged long after they should have perished during the 13th Black Crusade. Now I'm going to talk about their character a little bit. The thing that sets them apart from the rest of the Space Wolves is a large percentage of warriors who have succumbed to the Curse of the Wolfen, which I will be mentioning in more detail later on, but I'll go over it briefly now. Whether the increased percentage of 13th Company Marines who have succumbed to the Curse is a result of their prolonged exposure to the Eye of Terror, or whether it existed before the disappearance, nobody knows. However, the Space Wolves legend describes the Wolfen as the 13th Wolf, which stalks all of the Space Wolves and lends credence to the fact that the 13th Company was known to have a lot of Wolfen prior to becoming a lost company. Now their organisation again is different from that of the Space Wolves themselves, due to the lack of availability of reinforcements, resupply or proper facilities. The 13th Company's organisation and equipment depart heavily from Space Wolf norms, which of course are far from normal according to the Codex Astartes. Now the 13th Company maintains the dark grey colour scheme of the pre-heresy Space Wolves compared to the light grey colour scheme of today, and what little remains of their original equipment is coloured this, however much of their armour and weaponry has been replaced with material scavenged from fallen Chaos foes. Because of the impossibility of recruiting new brethren, there is no blood claws in the 13th Company, each and every blood claw having long since advanced to higher rank. Now, the company's assault specialists are storm claws, which are equally as experienced as the rest of the marines, but are still more hot-headed and aggressive than the current Grey Slayers. The key to the 13th Company's movement through the war are the Rune Priests. Because the Eye of Terror has unlocked hidden psychic powers in many recruits, the company has no shortage of highly gifted individuals. The most drastic departure from the rest of the chapters is the willing use of Wolfen in battle. Although normal Space Wolves sometimes use individual Wolfen in battle, the 13th Great Company use entire packs which have been culled from their brothers who have turned over the last 10,000 years to their more basic nature. Now, just before I end this very short video, I just want to talk about the canon conflicts with the 13th Great Company. In the Codex Space Wolves 5th edition, the Wolf Lord of the 13th Company, before its disappearance, is named Jorin Bloodhowl. However, the novel Wolf's Honour and the short story Wolf at the Door name the Lord as Bulvi. Now, we don't know exactly whether or not this is a transference of leadership over time, or in fact that there was just some contradiction in the information we've been presented. Okay then, that was a very short video, but it was just a bit of filler before we come up with our final Space Wolves video next week, which will be on their Gene Seed and the Curse of the Wolfen, which will be very interesting to find out about. After that, we're going to be moving on to a bit more of the general organisation of the Space Marines, and then we're going to be continuing our Chapters video. So don't forget, vote in the comments below, send me a personal message, anything you like. Just make it clear it's a Space Marines chapter. It can be popular, not popular, as long as I hear about it, and as long as enough votes are made, we are happy to do a video on it. Now, I also want to mention something we're going to be doing later on, 
which is going to be something we're trying to introduce called the Q&A. Now, unlike normal Q&As, this is going to be a little bit more of a discussion between myself and Peter, who you may remember from our first video. Now, what we're wanting to do is just let you know a little bit more about the universe of Warhammer 40,000. So, any questions you have, anything that isn't clear, let us know in the comments below, as I said, or more practically send us a message, because obviously it's easier to find them. And what we'll do is we'll have Peter asking me questions, and I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. And it can be anything from personal information about how we got into 40k to information relating to any race, any unit, anything related to Warhammer 40,000 at all. So yeah, let us know, and hopefully you'll hear about that towards the end of March. So thank you for watching this very short video. See you next time on the Vaults of Terror.